this is Josiah Plays Tyranny, second playthrough. We're going through the conquest again. And now I get to go to a new place. The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy, with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunon sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest. Either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's Crossing, or as a war advisor within the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Alright, so... Seraphina went to Apex, so I'm going to go to Lethian's Crossing. Deposits of iron made the settlement of Lethian's Crossing a strategic war asset. Although, here's the thing. I'm 100% going to go to Lethian's Crossing for my disfav disfavored playthrough. So I could save it for that, because going to Apex still seems more appropriate for this character. Plus, I can do the whole Queenslayer thing if I go here. Whereas if I go here, I don't know that I can do anything all that cool. So maybe I will go to Apex again and save Lethian's Crossing for my... Also for my character, yeah, it says Judge and Overseer or War Advisor. Well, obviously going with the armies as a War Advisor makes more sense for this character. So I'm going to save Lethian's Crossing for my Disfavored playthrough and maybe for my Scarlet Chorus playthrough as well. So I'm going to go back to Apex. The troops of the mountain realm of Apex stood idle in the safety of their valley, biding their time as their neighbors in the bastard tier fell. In the second year of war, a joint force of the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus crossed over the mountains to take control of the tier's central valley. The mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the Tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet chorus had pushed deep into the Tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunon assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory as well as keeping an eye on both armies. So last time I came here as Seraphina, I did everything was all about being peaceful and making making a treaty and signing an agreement and letting people live and and saving people's lives and and being really nice to the people of Apex. And that all that came in really handy and helped me when I was trying to ally with the Vendrian Guard in the beginning of the game last time. This time, not so fucking much. So I've got the Battle of Edge Ring Pass. Or Denial of Strength. I think Denial of Strength is what I did last time. Oh yeah, this is the thing that Ab hated me for the whole damn game. A school of water mages loyal to the Tearsmen posed a substantial threat. The Disfavored wished to annihilate the school, while the Scarlet Chorus insisted on capturing the mages wishing to learn of their craft. Last time, I gave the mages to the Voices of Nerat for interrogation. And man, were, man was fucking... Ab mad about that shit. She was really mad. So I could kill the mages, or, and this one looks like it's more appropriate for my character this time, the Battle of Edgering Pass. The Disfavored sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort. Cairn, Archon of Stone, buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, Yet none survived the onslaught. The chorus demanded compensation. I could side with the disfavored. You congratulated the disfavored for taking the pass without risking the lives of Kairos' loyal servants. At this stage of the campaign, it was vital to use any advantage that would mitigate ally losses. Or I could side with the Scarlet Chorus. You upheld the Scarlet Chorus's claim and demanded that the youngest disfavored scouts join the chorus to settle the debt. 
I don't know. This doesn't sound like something my character would care that much about. I think Slaughter the Mages seems more appropriate for my character. You sided with the Disfavored. And I'm interested to see what Ab says this time, taking this other choice instead of... All Mages had a chance to surrender before the war, and trying to capture the enemy would lead to needless losses. I can see my character really liking the idea of slaughtering Mages. You granted the disfavored the honor of killing the Tidecasters, as they called themselves, and Cairn, Archon of Stone, was dispatched to lay waste to the mages. The nearly indestructible Archons slew the school's champions in one glorious and bloody battle of magic. The Scarlet Chorus dispensed with any celebrations, observing that perhaps Cairn should have left something alive for his Chorus allies to interrogate. Now we've got Poisoning the Well or a Captive Captain. Alright, last time I did this one. Didn't I? Yeah, and I let the guy live. And I actually, you actually meet this guy later in the game if you let him live here. And he's really grateful towards you and he, he helps you resolve a whole situation peacefully instead of having to fight those dudes. When Kairos' forces captured a celebrated enemy hero, the armies bickered over his fate. The disfavored wanted him set free to convince the peers, his peers, of Kairos' mercy. The Scarlet Chorus wanted him flayed and staked as an example. So you can use the captain to send a message, or you can use the captain's body as a grim warning. Or, we've got poisoning the well. Hoping to break the siege, the Scarlet Chorus agents poisoned the apex water supply in secret. Days later... Uninformed disfavored scouts died of illness. Outraged by the failure of communication, the disfavored demanded that the chorus agents be turned over to them for punishment. Punish the saboteurs. Deny the charges. Um. Hmm. I think I gotta go with this one. You executed the captain and had his remains fashioned into a terrifying display. Fear was the Scarlet Chorus's most compelling weapon, and you knew that its impact would resonate across the Apex army. So this is the opposite of the choice Seraphina made. So now that guy will not be alive. Against the better wishes of tradition, mercy, or even good taste, you had the enemy captain drawn and quartered by a team of enthusiastic Scarlet Chorus butchers. Once the prisoner was disassembled, the butchers took great pleasure in reassembling his parts with stitching cloth and wooden poles, fashioning a crude totem of disorder. They mounted him on a hillside, where the warning of the grim spectacle haunted all who passed. Yeah, that's pretty bad. The fall of Apex. After many spans of battle, the army of Apex finally agreed to peace talks. The queen herself agreed to attend a negotiation summit and invited a, representa a representative of Tunon to discuss the possible terms. How did you negotiate the enemy's surrender? So last time, this is what Serafina did. She negotiated the surrender, putting an end to further bloodshed. But that's not what we're going to do this time. We're going to do this. Taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce, you baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her, frightening her vassals into submission. This is the one where they call you Queen Slayer. So yeah, we're going to kill the Queen in the duel. This kind of stuff really pisses off the Vendrian Guard. 
I don't think allying, allying with them would be possible this time, but I'm not going to. I'm going to kill them all. The Scarlet Corps has urged you to show the Overlord's strength by any means necessary. During peace talks, a well-placed insult goaded the Queen of Apex into striking you. You responded to the slight by challenging her to a duel. Though the Queen was skilled in battle, your field experience outmatched her court training. As her body lay cooling on the ground, you demanded that her followers kneel before the Overlord's banner. Unable to rise above the fear of the moment, the remaining leaders capitulated, surrendering the valley to Kairos' forces. Okay. Good. Now we've got three choices. The land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scarlet Chorus paused to revel in victory while the disfavored prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos' armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored and Scarlet Chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos' military left the choice of your next destination, your next destination, yours to make. I don't know what happens to the queen in the other scenario. I mean, she died. She was gone. Because they, what happens is, either way, they rise up again. Right? Either way, you've made peace here, temporarily. Either, they've, either you've reached an accord, or you've killed the queen and they, and they surrender. But then a couple years later, they rise up again. And that's what you're, you're going to deal with in the very beginning of the game. So I think as part of that rising up again... The queen gets killed. Alright. We can go to Azure. Kairos dispatched the Archon of Stone to subjugate the nation of Azure. We can go to Stalwart. With its easily defended position and rich military tradition, the realm of Stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers. We can go to the Vellum Citadel. Kairos' conquering gaze fell upon the Vellum Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets. Obviously, Serafina went to the Vellum Citadel and read the Edict of Fire that turned it into the Burning Library. Azure or Stalwart, which one seems more appropriate for this character? Either way, we're going to end up reading the Edict. So, for example, if we go to Azure... We're going to probably have stuff that relates to Beastmen, because this is where the Beastmen are. We're probably going to have to decide what kind of fucked up shit to do to the Beastmen. Probably have to do some stuff that'll piss the Beastmen off, so Kills and Shadow will be mad at me. And then you end up reading the, the uh, Edict of Stone. Any one of these three you go to, you've got to read the Edict. You either read the Edict of Stone, you read the Edict of Storms, or you read the Edict of Fire, depending on which one of these you go to. But you get a choice about how you do it. Like on Vellum Citadel, I got a choice between just reading it right away and not giving them any warning so that they all died, or giving them a one-day warning so that most of them could escape and then reading the edict. And I chose, of course, with Serafina to give them the warning. Seeing the exact nature of what happened with Cairn. If I do Stalwart... I'll be the one that reads the Edict of Storms, which could be interesting with Beric. Or, so probably I'll have more interesting dialogue with Beric if I go to Stourd. I'll probably have more interesting dialogue with Kills and Shadow if I go to Azure. Azure does sound interesting. Alright, let's go to Azure. Yeah, because my disfavored playthrough is going to go to Stalwart, so that's good. The nation of Azure, once the richest settlement of the Tears, sat on a verdant, fertile plain. As the disfavored clashed with Azure's defenders, the Scarlet Chorus contended against the region's tribal beastmen, 
who protected their ancestral lands with incredible fury. Kairos dispatched the Archon Cairn to break the stalemate and force Azure into submission. A colossal man of stone and flesh arrived as instructed. See right there. It wasn't the edict that made him a colossal man of stone and flesh. He was already a colossal man of stone and flesh before the edict. He arrived as instructed, but earning his cooperation was a tall order even for you. All right, I can do Stalked by Shadows. The big beast man. After a roaming pack of beastmen slaughtered a disfavored patrol, the Scarlet Chorus responded by laying claim to the beast for their army, while the disfavored readied a company to enact vengeance. The disfavored legion considered the beast beyond taming, and the butchers of their northern brethren needed to be brought to justice. I could sanction the disfavored's vengeance, you denied the Scarlet Chorus's spurious claim, and authorized the disfavored to enact proper vengeance for their fallen, or allow the chorus's conscription. You denied the disfavored their vengeance and joined the chorus in capturing the beasts. Or I could go to the destruction of Azure. Cairn, the Archon of Stone, carved a deadly path through Azure, using his powers to blight the land. The Scarlet Chorus complained that his tactics left no farmland to feed the growing army. As Cairn marched with the Disfavored, the Scarlet Chorus held the Legion responsible for the destruction and lost harvests. Dismiss the Scarlet Chorus complaints. He ruled that the Archon of Stone may do as he wishes with the soil, being its natural master, and instructed the Scarlet Chorus to better control their numbers and plan better for the lean seasons. He ordered Cairn's disciples the disfavored Earthshakers, to use their magic to repair the arable land destroyed by the Archon of Stone. Okay, so it's not going to be that one. So I'm either going to do this, Archon of Stone can do what he wants, or I'm going to do... Or I'm going to do this, and just slaughter the beasts. I think we'll go with this one. It seems more interesting. I said, that every time I say something and then you, it pops up in chat that you said it's basically the same thing. Like, just a second later. It's so funny. Alright. What happened to Noxmu? Is he gone? Did he ever say anything? Did he say, like, I'm going to bed? Need more Zs or anything? Or is he just really lurky? It's getting pretty late for him, so I imagine he's gone to bed. But I don't think he ever said anything. Alright, we're doing this one. The Disfavored argued that Cairn's tactics were a small price for the rapid conquest of such a large area. And you wholeheartedly agreed. Though you attempted to reason with the Scarlet Chorus, they refused to limit their numbers, insisting strength in numbers was their core tactic, and your proposal insulted their values. The disfavored, however, were emboldened by your ruling, and Cairn's mighty onslaught continued apace. Mighty onslaught, that sounds good. My character would be into that. Now we've got two more choices. Forced into the fray. The Scarlet Chorus forced his favored mages to fight in their battle. Cool picture. The Archon of Stone went missing during the campaign. As his favored mages busied themselves with the search for Cairn, the Scarlet Chorus forced the mages into combat against their will, during which two were slain. Furious at the waste of trained specialists, the disfavored demanded that the Scarlet for Chorus be punished. The disfavored demanded that you liberate the captive mages and had those who forced them into battle made their slaves. You ruled that the demands of war allowed the Scarlet Chorus to appropriate military resources when they were available. Okay, well, that one sounds lame. This one sounds more interesting. Cairn's madness. When an Archon turned traitor, who would bring him to justice? The Archon of Stone refused to rejoin the war camp, loudly denying Kairos' claim over Azure. 
Nothing less than a full unit of soldiers could subdue the treasonous Archon, yet neither army was willing to risk lives tracking him down. He delivered the order that sent Kairos' forces marching after Cairn. Send the disfavored. When Cairn brought them victory, the disfavored hailed him as one of their number. When Cairn defied the will of the Overlord, it fell to the disfavored to track him down and get answers. Or send the chorus. The Scarlet Chorus had the advantage of numbers and speed. He ordered them to deploy their numerous scouts to scour the countryside and find the alleged traitor Cairn. I think we got to go with sending the disfavored. I think my character would see it as their responsibility. So yeah, we're going to send the disfavored. So doing a wayward Archon was a larger task than rank-and-file soldiers could manage on their own. The disfavored scouts returned to camp after a long journey, bearing news of irregular rock formations and beast men chanting Cairn's name. They found neither hide nor hair. Hide nor hair? Beast men? Huh? Uh, not intended. Of the Archon of Stone, but its presence and impact on the Azure Wilderness were evident. Unease spread through the army as Kairos' forces wondered what Cairn's actions could mean. And now we come to the Edict of Stone. The Archon of Stone made brazen declarations that Kairos had no claim to rule the Tears. Soon after, word arrived that Kairos would dispatch this rebellious minion with an edict. The disfavored took solace in knowing the edict was coming and the commanders petitioned you to be the bearer of justice. Tunon selected you for the honor of proclaiming Kairos' Edict of Stone, a magical spell with the power to destroy the Archon. You wonder who Cairn's tailor was? It's a good question. It's a good question. As he sensed his approaching doom, Cairn began an assault on Plainsgate, the largest human settlement of the area. It fell to you to send Kairos' forces in a, into a suicide mission to halt Cairn's destruction while you completed the proclamation of the edict. Okay, hold on. How long does it take to complete the proclamation of the edict? Because when I proclaimed the edict in the game earlier, at the beginning of the game, when you walk into the tent, you're talking to the two archons, and you pull out the scroll and read the edict, it takes like a couple seconds. How long does it take? I mean, I could pull it out and I read a little thing. Like, we're done. I don't need to have a whole mission while I slowly... Oh, where's the edict? I can't find it. I've got to look through these bags. It could be... I don't know where... What did I do with the edict? Shit. Hold him off while I find... Oh, now I don't have my glasses. The... Why is the print on this edict so small? You got to... Where did I put my glasses? I mean, why... Why did I have to... <laughs> oh, fuck! Now I've spilled water on the edict! The ink is running! I don't... Oh, no! Now we have to piece it back together. A robe like his could double as a circus tent? I don't... I don't know about that. All right, I have three options. Option one, send the disfavored to delay Cairn. Knowing there was little chance of survival, you ordered the disfavored to march against the Archon of Stone as he neared the city of Plainsgate. You hoped that the elite of Kairos' armies would delay Cairn long enough for you to read the Overlord's Edict. Oh yeah, because he was so big, that's true. I thought maybe all of his clothes were made out of stone, too. That'd be sort of weird, but you never know. Alright, try to delay him with the disfavored. Send the Scarlet Chorus to delay, delay Cairn. Believing that there was a slight chance that their superior numbers could hold off the Archon of Stone, you sent the Scarlet Chorus to delay Cairn's march on Plainsgate. You hoped you would have enough time to read Kairos' edict before Cairn reached the city. Or... Send both armies to delay Cairn. He believed that the only chance of slowing Cairn's assault was to commit the full force of Kairos' armies against him. It was a desperate gamble, 
If you were wrong, there would be no one left alive to warn the other Archons of your failure. Still, you ordered both Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus forces to march against the Archon of Stone while you read the Overlord's Edict. Uh, now I've dropped it! It fell down in between these two rocks! Shit, I can't read! My hand is too big! Could we find a small child or somebody, maybe just a, a diminutive woman, who could reach down there and retrieve the edict? I, I've dropped it between the rocks. Damn it. I hope those armies are holding him off. This is taking longer than I expected. <laughs> Fucking, come on. Why is, taking the, why is it taking so long to read the edict? Seriously. Okay. So, here's something I know. When I went to Planescape, which is actually called Halfgate in my game that I just played, half the town was fucking destroyed. It was in a chasm. And they specifically said, this shit happened because Cairn got to the town too quickly because they didn't manage to slow him down in time and so he destroyed half the fucking town. Now, I really want to slow him down and see if actually I can save the town and have it have the whole town there. Because I think I remember vaguely from way, way, way back when they first announced this game, they showed some screenshots of like, your decisions during character creation changed the way the world is. And I think they showed some screenshots of like a village that was like, all destroyed or a village that was whole based on your choices so i'm thinking that maybe if i make this third choice and commit all the forces to slow him down that i might be able to save that town and have the actual town in the game be different than it was in my game with seraphina and that'll be really cool if it's the case so we're picking the all in option The Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus alike questioned the wisdom of this command. You were uncompromising. This approach was the only guarantee to halt the Archon's destruction. The Disfavored Phalanx shattered under Cairn's fury, and the Scarlet Chorus mob was reduced to a smear under his foot. The City of Planescape's... Planescape? Planescape, nice. The City of Planescape suffered little damage at all. Boom! Suffered little damage at all. I can't wait to see that, that town and see how it's different. There's going to be like extra buildings and stuff that weren't there before. You're pretty sure this was cut out like most ambitious features? Hey, Anonymous. Welcome. How you doing? You should be happy to know I'm playing on Path of the Dam this time. So no more crying from you. At least not about that. I'm sure you could find something new to cry about. Uh, armies kept, Karen occupied, a small beacon of hope among the devastation. As you read the Edict of Stone, the earth under the battlefield groaned open, splitting up outcroppings of rock that obliterated the surrounding landscape for miles. It was not good. It was not good. I feel like I can do a more, like, natural tenor, like, my more of my natural tone, pseudo-Russian voice, than if I try to do a really deep Russian voice or a really high Russian voice. That's where I really fuck it up more. Not that I do it well under any circumstances. But trying to do it extra deep like that is 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 worse. Because that's how I vary my voices. I try to do different pseudo accents and then I try to do some voices that are pitched higher or lower than my voice or some that are in the middle. And whenever I'm doing ones that are in the middle, I can usually pull the accent off better than when I try to pitch it higher, pitch it low, and do an accent. That's when I really start to suck. I mean, I suck all the time, but I mean, that's when I extra suck. The earth under the battlefield groaned open, spitting up outcroppings of rock that obliterated the surrounding landscape for miles. When the land heaved open to take Cairn, the Archon allowed it with serene acceptance. The Edict of Stone. With the lands blighted and unrecognizable, the realm of Azure was left utterly ruined by the events of the war. In times to come, the Tears would call this blasted region the Stone Sea, where the treacherous rock formations and persistent quakes became the defining features of this once verdant land. The Scarlet Chorus established a sprawling camp in the shattered rocky terrain, 
and quickly absorbed those displaced by the upheaval of the land. These hapless refugees were put to work as slaves and soldiers, and the chorus slowly built themselves a makeshift fortress in the blighted, quake-ridden realm. Your tour of duty in the broken lands of Azure was complete. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. Tunak tunak tun, tun tunak tun, tun tunak tun, ay 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 ay. No. Every time they mention Tunan, seriously. Hey, Firefrog six hundred, how you doing? What's going on, Firefrog? I'm st I'm starting the second campaign right now. All right, I've reached the end of conquest. Do you want to continue or erase your progress and start over? Let's replay it. No, just kidding. We're going to continue. Yeah, I'm playing on Path of the Dam this time, and instead of playing a mage character, I'm playing a melee character. So things should be much different. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. You're liking my first one. What have you, have you been watching it on YouTube? Years conquered in three years, yeah. Well, mostly conquered. I mean, there's still people fighting against them. As we see throughout the game. Fuck those plebs, kill for the awesome overlord. <laughs> the year is 431. And Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. What's up, Unbending Spirit? Welcome back. Good to see you again. Everybody loves the Overlord, apparently. I shall be the Overlord. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're saving Kairos for the sequel. Alright. This guy, again, needs to get a refund on that helmet. Oh, you get to kill a shitload of Archons. I mean, spoiler alert, but... Yeah. Not a shitload of Archons. Several. In my la in my playthrough, I killed four Archons. And potentially, I guess, could have killed one or two more. Maybe. There better be an expansion with the Archon of Fungus. I don't know if there's any way to kill Siren. I doubt it. But yeah, you could certainly you could certainly kill um you could finish off Cairn and actually fight for Archons. It's kind of bad they don't have a defined purpose. With their main forces spread across the tiers. The Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well, to crush the resistance. But months pass, with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time, and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. 
crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. Dun dun dun! Yeah, I think Kairos is just a super powerful Archon, in essence, who discovered the secrets of the old walls and the spires and figured out how to cast edicts, and nobody else knew how to do it. And then Kairos took over everything, made it illegal to go into the old walls so that nobody else could figure out the secret, and pretty much has just kept control over everything since then. That's my theory on the whole Kairos situation. I sure hope you can load your previous save game. Well, Kairos is not really a chick or a dude. All throughout the game when it's brought up, they fuck around with you. And they never give you a definitive answer. As even the people that have met Kairos won't tell you one way or another. They just fuck with you about it. The official line is Kairos' is mother and father. So, I don't know. I think Kairos may be beyond gender. Kairos might not even be in a physical, normal body anymore. Kairos could be a floating ball of light, for all we know. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos' armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Or Kairos could be undead. You know? Maybe Kairos is transgendered. Maybe Kairos is intersex. You don't know. You don't know. Kairos could just be a giant cow. Fox Moo would like that. All right, any way I can. Let's do this. There's the Weeping Blood statue. They said that statue only started weeping blood like that after the Queen of... Baitbinder de Valgard, I presume. We've been expecting you. I got a sanguine scroll. All right, so here's my dude, Valgard. He's all kinds of can of whoop-ass. Conqueror's Will. Kairos demands victory at Vendrian's Well. As a fate binder of Tunon, you are tasked with delivering Kairos' edict to the Archons of the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus. They must defeat the rebellious Vendrian guards soon, or everyone in the valley, allies and enemies alike, will die. Travel to the Disfavored Camp. Make your way southeast through Edgering Fort and travel to the Disfavored Camp where Graven Ash and the voices of Narat are meeting to discuss their strategy. I don't know any spell sigils at all. And I only have 16 lore. <laughs> Romantic interest in the third game? I, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Alright, first thing we gotta do is hide my helmet because check out my sweet ass mohawk. Know what I'm saying? Sweet ass mohawk. I got a two handed weapon. I got a bronze war mace and a bronze greatsword. Let's do a little comparison of these. The war mace does more damage, but it's slower. And it's also devastating, so it does a push on crit. Both of them use my two-handed weapon skill. I think I'll go for the bigger damage for now. Although I really do like using a sword better than a blunt weapon. Kairos' Edict. Well, we're not going to read this again. We've already read the description of that item. And it's... 
We got the healing potion. What else we got here? Fate Finder Seal. Now this and this, these two items right here, were supposed to be included with my game, my first playthrough, but I didn't get them. Because I, apparently they weren't yet downloaded or patched in or whatever when I started. So these are brand new. The seal of a fate binder is used to stamp documents with Tunan sigil. Though modest in appearance, the seal is merely a, is a representation of Kairos' legal approval. Merely holding it impresses upon the wielder a sense of authority. Plus two resolve, I'll take it. Boom. Commander's will. These boots have been passed on the ranks of northern soldiers who distinguish themselves as promising leaders. They are common quality, leather boots, only I can equip them. Passive, allied AoE, remove a hostile effect on kill. That's nice. Put those on. I've also got the Sanguine Scroll, which lets me rain blood down on motherfuckers. Does this not even use a skill? How could it not use a skill? And this is a one-handed weapon. Rod and Ruin. Makes enemies explode. Eh. Okay. I've got 51 two-handed weapon skill. I've got 45 parry. 43 athletics. Beautiful. Plan on Path of the Damned. Right. Right. Alright, what are they talking about? Can you really do just glaring for an entire campaign? Not an entire campaign. You can glare a lot, though. You can glare a lot. I see this character doing a lot of glaring. This character is probably going to do all the athletics things, when you can use athletics to do something to somebody in combat, in conversation. And probably a hell of a lot of glaring. And yes, to answer your question, Firefrog, you do get to kill Archons in combat. Like proper boss fights. They have all kinds of special abilities and everything and you actually fight them. Okay. Okay. So, first things first. The path behind you is now blocked. Kairos' magic has sealed the valley. We're going to make Aurora wait, obviously. As we come over here and climb down this. And we're going to look for goodies. Got some fruit. Quite down. <laughs> Got it. Got a topaz. Oh, I'm not going to find all the hidden Quite stuff down. with this character. Because my other character had amazing subterfuge. Moving cautiously. This character has shit subterfuge. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the lore to get this thing. Memorial has been left to weather the elements for many months and has fallen into disrepair. Resting at the top of the memorial is a small, weather-beaten enclosure with a rusted torque inside. The torque possesses a number of small grooves that otherwise appears fairly ordinary. Alright, let's let's... Let's get my hotbar set up here. I got thrust, sunder, and cleave. I got my warrior's respite and my blood of the fallen. All right, that doesn't need to be even on, need to be on my bar. I'll leave some room in here in the middle for some other new good stuff when I get it. Turn the AI off. I can only carry four camping supplies on this difficulty. Can't do anything else with this. Let's climb back up here. An old rope has been coiled around this rock, weathered from long use. Glare Athletics Hybrid build? Yeah. Alright, and I only have 90 health because I'm a weakling. Kairos the Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side. I will attempt to use the same kind of voices for the same characters that I did in the first playthrough, except for the fact that I'm going to forget most of them. So most of them will end up having a totally different kind of voice because I won't remember. 
but I do think I basically remember what Aurora sounded like. The disfavored warrior claps her gauntlet to her breastplate, the traditional salute of her legion. Sorry I don't have a proper welcome for the Queen Slayer. Perhaps if I weren't so short-handed, I could have made preparations. But no bother. We are honored to have you all the same, and I look forward to seeing the Oathbreakers lose their cool at the sight of you. I gained major favor because of my conquest thing. Queen Slayer. During your service in Vendrian's Well in the year 429 TR, commanders on both sides wisely assessed a Vendrian guard would likely fight to the last man, and in doing so, give the other realms time to rally or intervene. Ordered to convince the enemy to surrender, you met with the nobles and baited Queen Atlanta, ruler of Apex, to strike you under a blue flag, allowing you to promptly slay her in self-defense. In the wake of her death, the Vendrian Guard promptly surrendered and held to that armistice until the start of 431-TR when the Guard broke their oath of disarmament. Oathbreakers. In honor of the Vendrian Guard reneging on the surrender of 429, soldiers in both the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus now refer to these tiermen as Oathbreakers. It is perhaps one of the few points of agreement between the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus. Getting XP before reaching the trainer at level 1 shows how seriously you're taking the game already. What? Well, of course I'm going to get XP before reaching the trainer. But I'm not going to get enough XP to level up, presumably. Okay, our first opportunity to glare silently comes. Let us do it. I'm so excited about glaring silently. A nervous smile creeps over her as she waits for a response that doesn't arrive. I am asking questions beyond my station. She dips low, trembling as she bows. Forgiveness, please. Well, you've traveled a long way. I won't keep you further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you at... Her voice falls silent, her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? More runners! Third time this week! The Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived. But they're a bit too late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Does the same thing. Oh my god, here we go. Path of the damned, I'm gonna die to this first dude. For the glory of Kairos. Help the disfavored battle the Vendrian Guard. The Vendrian Guard broke through the fort's defenses and now make their way toward the valley entrance. Head them off and dispatch as many as you can. Oh god, I'm scared. I'm already scared. Oh, this uses lore. Oh, that's great. I want to raise lore. Let's wreck this guy with this thing. Alright, now we're going to start with Sunder, because that'll lower his armor so our other attacks will do more damage. You know what I need to know? I need to know if flanking is a thing. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, I know you're like, just hurry up and do the fight. But, hold on. I need to know. Oh, I gotta read my biography too, because it's different from my other one. But no, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, let's see if flanking is a thing. Engagement, favor, flank? No, I don't see anything about flanking. Yeah, I don't think there's any flanking in this game. Sunder a motherfucker. After that, hit him with this. Path of the Damned equals easy mode confirmed. That's one down. Let's check further along the path for more. Wet stone, potion of protection. Nobody got time for that shit. Desiccated corpses line the road of victory to Vendrian's Well, an example of the fate that awaits those who resist Kairos' will. And here's the statue. This ancient weeping mother statue pays homage to the Queen Lycaris. Sorry, can't. First of her name. Fresh water once flowed from this statue, but when Kairos' forces attacked Vendrian's Well in 429, the statue began weeping blood and has done so ever since. Actually, I am going to try to kill her. I happen to know that you can't kill her the first time you meet her.
My character looks badass. I love that fucking mohawk, dude. The avalanche has us blocked. Think you can fit through the rubble? Ooh, I get to do something this time that I didn't get to do last time. Oh, I, need, I need to fucking save my game. What am I doing? I got no saves yet. A rock side blocks the path ahead. You can squeeze through a narrow gap between the stones, or you can attempt to push one of the boulders out of your way. I get to push the boulder this time. Last time I couldn't do it because I didn't have enough athletics. Press your weight against the boulder directly in your path until it starts to move. Watch this. Watch this. Brute strength will also work. Oh, motherfucker got crushed! Right. Alright. Let's cruise up in here. Does this use a skill? Uses athletics. I should use this every fight just to train athletics. As soon as I take any damage, I should use this. Even though it's going to nerf my damage. Alright, let's run over here. Honor Guard, Sun Soldier. Let's... let's... Will do. Sunder the sky. Then let's cleave. Will do. Nice thrust. Oh, jibbed! Will do. Will do. Also jibbed. Let's take a look at our results here. Let's take a look at our results. How do we do? How do we do? All right, we ran up. We sundered a motherfucker for 19. We cleaved for 12 and 14. We thrusted critically for 36. Hit for 16. Sundered crit for 33. Oh, dude, we're a badass. We're a badass. The blood fresh would be a great source of food. One can feed a small army with blood puddings with a flow like this. Ew. Sun Soldier's Javelin. Not gonna use that. What's up, Stone Shield? Don't bother with me! Go down to the pass! Drastus! The soldier clutches his gut and winces. You can see a hint of entrails between his fingers. I don't have time for this. Go! Go on! Graven Ash is with me! Alright. Dun 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 dun. Waking Death. Now that I want, because that's a nice little consumable. Several skulls, bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds, are spiked on a roughly hewn post. It is the only heraldry the Scarlet Chorus needs. Alright, we're gonna quick save. We're gonna pause. In our next episode, we will go forth and fight more Vendrian Guard and meet Verse and do all that good stuff. But, it's gonna do it for this one. If you're watching the stream, I am not stopping. I'm gonna keep on playing after this, but. If you're watching on YouTube, that's going to bring this episode to an end. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Tyranny, second playthrough.